Cube, Silicon Angles production. We're live at VMworld 2013. We've been going now, this is day two, a wall-to-wall -wall coverage, and we're going to continue tonight. Stu, we're going to be at AT&T Park, uh, the NetApp customer event. Last year we were there, but we weren't live. This year we've got live ping, power, and pipe. We'll be We'll be on the field at AT&T Park, it's going to be awesome. You see if you can get some great photos like last year, Dave. <laughs> I mean, all over the Valley News when you had Pat Gelsinger wearing the NetApp jersey last year. It was yeah, I don't classic. Think, I don't think Pat's going to be there tonight, but I'm sure somebody from, uh, from VMware will be there, all the NetApp execs, but really the focus is on the customers. What I like about that event is it's a customer event, it's, it's, it's enterprises, it's cloud service providers, it's partners. Um, and yeah, there'll be some NetApp executives there as well coming on theCUBE, so we'll be broadcasting there live. We start at 6 p.m. Pacific time. So, so watch for that, but we're here at VMworld in Moscone, Stu, Stu, another big day on theCUBE. Uh, we heard Carl Eschenbach uh, this morning talk about really a lot of you know, meat and potatoes discussion about what they're doing. Um, it, he bit, some, pretty much took over for Steve Harrod's keynote had a lot of demos, you know, a lot of, a lot of detail about what they're doing with product and you know, proof points, not big vision, this is what we're going to do next year, it's really about it's what we're doing now. So, but one of the things I want to try to unpack with you a little bit is the whole SDN piece. Uh, we saw yesterday, uh, during Pat's keynote, a very simple conceptual demo of, of SDN. Uh, Martin, who's coming on tomorrow with theCUBE, we'll talk about that in a minute, gave that demo. Talk about networking and SDN, Stu. Um, is it really going to be as easy as that discussion implied? No, Dave, hey, absolutely not. I mean, you, you, we talk a lot about storage uh, you know, at the Wikibon community, and we know how reticent storage people are to change. And I tell you, networking people are no better, and as a matter of fact, they're, they're usually uh, more risk averse, uh, because if, if the network goes down, the business just stops. I mean, it's bad if you lose data, but if I can't get to anything, it's, it's just Yeah, that's a good bad. point. So lose a, lose a packet, no problem, or just resend the data. But network goes down, big problem. Yeah. Network's down. <laughs> <laughs> a a absolutely. So, um, you know, we looked at NYSERA pre-acquisition and really, really cool stuff. Um, you, you look at the customers that they put out on stage, you know, City, eBay, and GE. Those guys, some of the large telecoms, um, you know, global service providers, these are the ones that are adopting SDN. Um, you know, it's, it's well known, Google's been using SDN for a couple of years, so these really big guys, absolutely, um, they're jumping on this trend, but to get from a legacy environment to a new environment is not going to be easy for the average enterprise, because the, the big guys, they're building a new data center, they're putting out new racks all the time, so it's much easier for them to adopt that. If you look at refresh cycles in the enterprise, it takes a lot longer to make something that, even if it's a radical evolution, it's a lot of change for most enterprises. Yeah, so, um, it was interesting, you saw the, the partner slide up there, no Cisco. Yeah. Right. Lots of, a lot of people talking about that. So yeah, we, we had a great interview yesterday and I got gotten a lot of feedback Sony. as to, you know, where are Cisco and VMware, you know, where are they friends and where are they frenemies? You know, so. Well, so I mean, we'll help our audience understand that. I mean, you know, basically what I'm what I'm hearing is that 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 VMware is gonna do try to do to networking what it did to compute. Um, now Carl made the point today, Intel sold a lot more servers, you know, but the server in industry in a way also consolidated. You know, um, the server guys were some pressure, they didn't own the hypervisor, they were saying, shoot, we missed that one, why didn't we buy VMware? You know, yeah. IBM said, why didn't we you know, think of that, even though they invented all this stuff. So, so while VMware's um, you know, discourse in the industry is very you know, positive and it'll be okay, you know, Cisco's got to be concerned about this and yeah, striking back in yeah, their own way. So, so, so help us squint through that. So sure, so one of the things that was really interesting is VMware showed uh, how many ports there are in the world. There's physical ports and there are virtual ports, mm -hmm. and in 2012, virtual ports surpassed physical ports. 
and it's nice to say that you know you've got more you know networking administrators you know here at VMworld than you had at Cisco Live. But the reality is is you know there still is that difference between a network administrator and a virtualization administrator. Um, you know the, the the it's been a big challenge as to how do we bridge that gap. Um, you know Cisco's had solutions in there, and NSX is trying to help bridge that physical to virtual world, and they're building that ecosystem to try to fix that problem because today it's two different networks. I've got my virtual and I've got my physical. You got your underlays and overlays now and all the different ways to hook into it. And we really do need to simplify networking because today it's a mess of protocols and physical versus virtual uh, and you know the WAN are all different separate. The, you know, Wi-Fi, there's so many subparts of networking and it is a complex arcane environment that is long overdue but to be fixed. But then VMware wants to make networking and storage invisible, right? Okay, but do Cisco and EMC See, for example, want VMware to make storage and networking invisible. Yeah, yeah, great question. So, you know, of course, Cisco doesn't want you know networking to be invisible. Cisco, at the end of the day, wants more packets going over their infrastructure and, and cores. So, uh, you know, software's fine. They've got uh, solutions that they're putting out there, and uh, you know, Cisco's got you know the firewalls and uh, you know load balancers and all those things that that they can put as a service in their environment. Um, and EMC, of course, uh, is you know going to be tightly tied to VMware. We we know in how closely EMC and VMware are working together. There are new changes coming to storage, things like what VVols should radically change the way storage is done. However, you know, EMC is saying that they're tightly tied and going to ride that next wave. If it's done right, it should lead new opportunities for some of the startups in the space that are closely tied into virtual environments to do things better and much cheaper. So, from EMC standpoint, you know, from Joe Tucci, I should say, standpoint, it kind of doesn't matter. You know, let VMware grab as much of the storage stack as is appropriate and let EMC, you know, fight it out with NetApp and Hitachi and IBM and HP and everybody else. Ultimately, it's it's you know, it's not a zero sum game, for, you know, for us. You know, we can we can play in both camps. Um, Cisco, even though it has, you know, some shares in VMware, a little different. You know, they got a lot more to lose. What if what if Cisco had purchased VMware. Yeah. Uh, what would that have? What? Have, how would it have been different? How would they be? You know, driving networking. What would? And would it? Would it? Because they have two thirds of the market. Would it? Would would SDN accelerate if Cisco owned VMware? Yeah. Uh, like, what's it, what if there was no friction, yeah. no corporate organizational friction? So, so to be honest, I'd be a little concerned because uh, if I, I look in the industry, you know, Infiniban had a lot of potential out there, and one of the, the coolest companies out there was one called Topspin. It was being integrated into all the blade servers, and Cisco bought it, and they basically killed the product line, and it was decimating to the ecosystem for many years. Infiniban has never recovered from that because so of, because of their interest in Ethernet. You're yeah. So, so Cisco. You know, wants you know packets going over their cores. They're, they're highly tied to it. Uh, you know, one of the things we've been a little critical on VMware is, have they been slowing down innovation in the storage world? You know, due to what they their relationship with EMC. Um, even the announcements that came out today, you know, VVols and vSAN, uh, they're not shipping yet, and it's going. Also, well, have they in your opinion? So, uh, you know, I, I think that it is definitely not going as so fast. So Chad's coming on tomorrow, right? And Chad's yeah. like, no way, wouldn't do that, Joe wouldn't allow it, et cetera, et cetera. So we're going to push him on that a little bit. But, but there's evidence of that, yeah, right? Dave, I, I was talking to a startup today that, that is a, you know, partner of VMware, and they said one of the challenges is, you know, when they find, you know, an issue that's going to slow them down, um, they might not get as fast a response as the big guy, just because, you know, their use case is a corner case to VMware, however, it's going to stop that startup from really being able to push that deployment out there, as opposed to the big guys just say, hey, you know, I've got you know, thousands of customers you know, already running this and all the big banks and everything, so you know, go fix it. Well, and we saw uh, the, on the SDS you know, logo slide, the ecosystem slide, there were you know, what David Floyer calls the cartel. Now there was more than, Fusion IO was on there, but you know, Tintry wasn't on there, I don't think. At least I didn't see him. A lot of the smaller, you know, flash vendors. You didn't see Violin on there. You didn't see Pure, yeah. you didn't see so, Nimbus. So, so we are seeing Vivals is out there. Actually, D David Floyer sat down with uh, Tintry and said that they've got, you know, some of the best Vivals integration that he's seen. So there is the opportunity that Vivals can kind of change that integration discussion. The scorecard that we've done over the last couple of years kind of, you know, matches up the legacy environments a little more and, you know, we're looking to, you know, see how some of the 
you know, hybrid and VM aware type solutions fit into that a little bit better in this, this new realm of the software defined storage environment. Yeah, so, um, so speaking of which, uh, uh, Stu and David Floyer just published a study on uh, multi-hypervisor environments, VMware dominant in multi-hypervisor environments was the major finding, you can Google that on Wikibon and, and see that. And David Floyer just put up another uh, analysis today, just another, another piece of that uh, survey, looking at distribution of hypervisors and, and data centers today and, and in 18 months, and then even though it's not uh, virtualization related, Jeff Kelly put up uh, uh, the Hadoop NoSQL software and services market forecast today. So it's a slice on our big data forecast. For those of you who follow that big data forecast, Jeff Kelly published the industry's first big data forecast um, two years ago now, and, uh, and has been kept updating that. This, to my knowledge, Stu, is the, is the number, it's the first time anybody's ever published a Hadoop NoSQL software and services market forecast with market shares. So, you know, you've got the top 10 players in here, some great information, so check out wikibon.org, go to siliconangle.com, go to siliconangle, or youtube.com slash siliconangle to check out all the videos here. Stu, thank you for helping me uh, wrap up. I am off to uh, AT&T Park to the, uh, to the NetApp event, so, so keep it there. Uh, we're going to switch over in a few minutes, but we're going to go live from AT&T at 6 p.m. So this is day two. Uh, tomorrow, just a quick uh, plug for tomorrow, we start nine at, uh, let's see, 10 nine a.m. Uh, 9 a.m. tomorrow. Uh, that's right, oh, 9 a.m. tomorrow, uh, uh, Pacific time. Uh, we've got uh, uh, Pat Gelsinger, so prime time, East Coast time. Sit down, grab a sandwich, click on uh, siliconangle.tv. Pat Gelsinger's coming on here live. Really excited about that. Sean Douglas is coming on. Uh, he's the CTO of Service Mesh, always a great guest. Uh, the CTO of ServiceNow is coming up. If you don't know ServiceNow, you should get to know ServiceNow. One of the most interesting companies in the business. Arne Josephsberg is their uh, CTO, he's coming on. Martin Casado is coming on. He uh, was the former CEO of, uh, of NYSERA. CTO. Uh, CTO, sorry. Bill Fathers coming on. Um, he's running uh, EMC's hybrid, uh, EMC, v VMware's hybrid cloud service. Uh, we've got an OpenStack discussion tomorrow. Uh, Sanjay Poonin is coming on, new VMware executive, came over from uh, SAP, great hire by VMware really to drive some of the end user computing business. Cumulus Network's coming on, we got a bunch of guys from EMC, Rackspace, uh, who else we have here? Uh, Chad Sackage coming on tomorrow. Uh, just a number of great guests, so, so stay tuned tomorrow. Uh, keep the tweets coming, I'm at D. Vellante, he's at Stu, at Furrier is my co-host uh, during most of the time here. That's a wrap today, day two, here live from the Moscone. If you're here, come in, Moscone South, street level, take a right, right turn, rest just before the escalators, can't miss us. I'm Dave Vellante with Stu Miniman. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>